Merce Dog was able to record his first career hat trick. And we need to talk more about the season that Dawson Mercer is having because he is starting to rack up the points. And I think everybody is starting to notice it. And also, don't call it a comeback because after a god-awful performance against the Winnipeg Jets, the New Jersey Devils were able to rebound and sweep the season series against the Pittsburgh Penguins. We have a lot to break down in today's episode of Locked on Devils. Buckle up, everybody. You're Locked on Devils, your daily podcast on the New Jersey Devils. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Hi, this is Bryce Salvador, and you're Locked on Devils with Trey Matthews. All righty now, what is up, New Jersey? Welcome back to the Locked On Devils podcast here on Locked On Network. I'm your host, college hockey play-by-play announcer, Devils writer for Pucks and Pitchforks, and also part-time credential media member, Trey Matthews. So for the first time since the 2009-2010 season, the New Jersey Devils have swept the season series against the Pittsburgh Penguins, and this win was much needed because, let's face it, during the course of the weekend, it wasn't the New Jersey Devils' best showing. So First against the Chicago Blackhawks. Yes, they were able to come away with a 6-3 victory. However, I think they let the Chicago Blackhawks hang around a tad bit longer than I'm sure that they would have liked. And then the very next game against the Winnipeg Jets, let's face it, I'm sure the coaching staff, the players, I don't think they care what happens to the film of that game. Uh, They could toss it into the ocean. They can take it to the zoo and have an elephant stomp on it. They could kick it out of existence. They can burn it. They could shred it. Whatever the case might be, that game was an absolute, utter nightmare. And it was embarrassing. So I give the Devils the benefit of the doubt because maybe they went into that game a little lethargic because, according to Ryan Ovazinski, the team didn't get into Winnipeg until around 2 in the morning. So they certainly played like they were tired. But Nonetheless, they come away with a big victory against the Pittsburgh Penguins, a team that is hunting for a playoff spot and trying to keep their playoff streak alive. However, it is in great danger right now, and the Devils did not care whatsoever. They came away with a 5-1 to one victory. So the storylines, like for any postgame recap, there are many. So we're going to talk about Dougie Hamilton and his historic season at the blue line for the New Jersey Devils. Then we're going to talk about the improved power play. A little later, we'll talk about Dawson Mercer and his first career hat trick. And then like I do with every postgame recap, I will compare the stats and then give the Devils a letter grade. So let's talk about Dougie Hamilton's historic season for the New Jersey Devils. So Recently, we talked about how Dougie Hamilton surpassed Scott Stevens for most goals by a Devils defenseman in a single season. However, he is now on the doorstep of the franchise record that is currently held by Barry Beck because Barry Beck was able to uh, get 22 goals when the New Jersey Devils were the Colorado Rockies. And he got that during the 1977-1978 year campaign. So Dougie Hamilton is close on the franchise record for most goals in a single season. And I think he is going to get it, especially when there's four games remaining and you got the Sabres and you got the Columbus Blue Jackets for two of those games. So I think Dougie Hamilton, he is smelling history and he wants that franchise record for the New Jersey Devils because he's already broken the Devils record and now he's gunning for that Colorado Rockies record. And it's also worth mentioning, according to Devils PR, entering Tuesday night's game, Hamilton's 20 goals was actually ranked second in the entire NHL, right behind the San Jose Sharks' Eric Carlson. And Carlson has 22 goals at the time of this recording. And at this point, Carlson has all but won the Norris Trophy. And he is certainly having a big year amongst all the defensemen in the entire league. But it goes to show you that in terms of goals, Dougie Hamilton doesn't trail Eric Carlson by that much. And now here's one record that I don't think is being talked enough about, but The all-time single-season points leaders for a New Jersey Devils defenseman is 78 that is held by Scott Stevens. Dougie Hamilton now has 73 points, so he'll need five points to tie Scott Stevens' all-time record and six to surpass it. So when looking ahead of the New Jersey Devils' schedule, I literally just said their next matchup is going to come against the Columbus Blue Jackets. Then they got the Boston Bruins on April 8th, and then the Buffalo Sabres on April 11th. Then to round out the entire year, They got the Washington Capitals on April 13th. So can Dougie Hamilton break Scott Stevens' record for most all-time points by a Devils defenseman? Well, like I said, he's going to need five to tie the record, and then he's going to need six to surpass it. 
So it is definitely a tall order. But the one thing that I can give the benefit of the doubt for Dougie Hamilton is, like I said, you got the Columbus Blue Jackets on Thursday. Then next Tuesday, you got the Buffalo Sabres. So the Columbus Blue Jackets, they're the second youngest team in the NHL. The Buffalo Sabres are the youngest team in the NHL. So maybe Dougie Hamilton could take advantage of those two teams during the course of these next uh, few games for Devils. But that game against the Boston Bruins, that might be a little bit of a difficult task to have Dougie Hamilton rack up the points. And that's definitely going to be a true test for the entire Devils team, not just Dougie Hamilton. Then the game against Washington Capitals, I know the Capitals are basically out of the playoff hunt, but it's pretty much a coin flip. Can Dougie Hamilton maybe show out in the final game of the year? So just letting you guys know that Dougie Hamilton is not too far behind for the all-time points for a Devils defenseman. So he is one goal away from tying Barry Beck's franchise record for most goals, and he is six from surpassing Scott Stevens' all-time points record. So Dougie Hamilton is having a historic season, at least on the offensive side of things, for Devils defensemen. So wanted to give Dougie Hamilton his roses right there. And now let's talk about the improved power play for the New Jersey Devils because – Going back to March 21st, going into the matchup against the Minnesota Wild, the New Jersey Devils were ranked 18th in the entire league for a power play percentage. Now, going into this matchup against the Pittsburgh Penguins, the New Jersey Devils ranked 14th. So they were able to go up a few positions higher in, the, in these last few weeks. And I was hoping that either Bryce or Erica would talk about it on air, and they were able to do so. So when looking at the stats going from February 6th to March 23rd, the New Jersey Devils face-off win percentage was 17th on the power play. Successful scene passes, 21st in the entire league. Offensive zone turnovers, 21st in the entire league. And then zone time, 29th in the entire league. So we've been talking about how bad the power play has been for New Jersey Devils the last few weeks. In fact, it's been an Achilles heel during the course of the year. But I said, this team has way too much talent for them to come up empty on a lot of these power play chances. And during these last few games, I was like, the Devils are improving a lot on the power play. And I think they're going to just maybe get a, a few positions higher at this point. I don't think it's mathematically possible for the Devils to crack the top 10. However, I was just like, I just want to see some minor improvement before the playoffs. Because like I said, Devils have way too much talent on this team to uh, basically be mediocre. So can they maybe just get above that 15th position so that, so that way they're at least like somewhat respectable or somewhat decent. And then these last six games for the Devils, when looking at face-off win percentage, sixth in the entire league. Successful scene passes, 10th in the entire league. Offensive zone turnovers, seventh in the entire league. And zone time, 10th in the entire league. So Timo Meyer was able to get a power play goal in this matchup for Devils, albeit it was a five on three, but nonetheless, Devils, once again, able to get a power play goal. And Timo Meyer doing what Timo Meyer likes to do. If I said it once, I've said it a thousand times. He likes to hang in front of that net, and he loves to clean up the messes. So I know this game was another disappointing outing for Jack Hughes, not because he was basically a non-factor. It was just that he was getting snake bitten once again. He was creating good looks for himself. He was creating good looks for his teammates. But the one thing Jack Hughes can hold his head high about, at least he was able to walk away with a point. So he got the primary assist on Timo Meyer's power play goal. So, uh, and something else that I liked during the course of this game, when the Devils went on the five-on-three advantage, I saw that Lindy Ruff took out Jesper Bratt and replaced him with Dawson Mercer. And speaking of which, we're going to talk about Dawson Mercer and his overall big performance for the Devils momentarily. But to wrap up my thoughts on the power play, going forward, I think the Devils are picking up at the right possible time because these last few games is basically to see what minor tweaks do you need to work on what other things that that need to be cleaned up when we're talking about Timo Bayer and things of that nature? Because I like because like I said, he likes to clean up those messes. But overall, as a team, what do you need to clean up? What do you need to tweak? What do you need to fix going into the playoffs? And right now, the Devils are clicking on their power play. They're improving, and the numbers show it. So I'm glad that the Devils are finally showing that steady improvement and getting Timo Meyer added to the mix. I I said it was going to help the Devils more ways than one because Timo Meyer is excellent on the power play. And right now, Timo Meyer has indeed been a force. He's been a factor on that power play unit for the Devils. It was only going to be a matter of time, but I said it once, I'll say it again. So you got Jack Hughes, you got Nico Heischer, you got Jesper Bratt, you got Dawson Mercer, you got Timo Meyer. 
you got all these guys on your power play unit. And I said, once they start to click, look out. This team is going to be scary. If not this year, if not during the course of the playoffs, I guarantee you next year, you don't want to put the Devils on the man advantage. So let's talk about Dawson Mercer and his big outing. In fact, that's an understatement. Dawson Mercer was everywhere this game, and he rightfully deserved that hat trick. It was his first career hat trick, and Bill Spaulding said on air that this was the first time that the New Jersey Devils had three hat tricks during the course of a year. So I think Bill Spaulding actually misspoke because he said three different players were able to get a hat trick because obviously you got Jesper Brad, you got Jack Hughes, now you got Dawson Mercer. And he said this was the first time that something like that has happened since the 2011-2012 season. That was the year in which the Devils went to the Stanley Cup Finals. But like I said, I think Bill Spaulding misspoke on that stat because when looking at hockey reference, uh, Kovalchuk got two hat tricks during the course of that season, and then Parise got the other one. And I don't think Kovalchuk accounts for two different players but obviously that's three hat tricks in a single season so I think that's what Bill Spaulding was trying to say on air either that or I misheard him but a fan also backed me up on my claim saying that I think Bill Spaulding misspoke on it because he was also questioning saying like okay it was Kovalchuk it was Parise but who was the third other player but according to hockey reference Kovalchuk got two hat tricks during the course of the 2011-2012 season and Zach Parise got the other one but Digressing a little bit, let's talk about Dawson Mercer. And I think Ken Danico acknowledged this on air, which is that Dawson Mercer is just a very smart player. So I want to go back to when I talked about uh, the battle uh, between Dawson Mercer and Alexander Holtz, because for any of my avid listeners and for any of my newer listeners, I will uh, jog your memory. So before the start of the 2021-2022 season, we were having a debate. Who was going to make the final roster spot? For the New Jersey Devils. Obviously, it was anticipated that Alexander Holtz would get that spot for the Devils, but Dawson Mercer was putting on a show during the course of preseason. So a lot of fans were debating, like, is it going to be Alexander Holtz? Is it going to be Dawson Mercer? Because Alexander Holtz also had a good showing during the course of preseason. But I said, and I said this verbatimly, I said, if there was a gun pointed at my head and someone forced me to make a decision, I would have said Dawson Mercer should make the opening night rosters over Alexander Holtz. And I even talked to Bryce Salvador about it when uh, he appeared on my show as my 300th episode guest. I said that Dawson Mercer is just showcasing that he's a very smart player. And some of the things that he was doing during the course of preseason of that year, you just can't teach it. Like you can't teach uh, that kind of high hockey IQ. And then in this game, Candanico, once again, uh, just said that Dawson Mercer was a very smart player. So when looking at the first goal he scored back in period number one, it was Mercer and Heischer on a two-on-one, and Heischer was able to pinpoint Mercer beautifully, but Mercer's keeping up with the captain, and the captain is basically thinking two steps ahead. He's like, okay, how do I set up my teammate on this uh, certain play? So he was able to pass the puck beautifully to Dawson Mercer. Mercer was able to go back door on Jari, and thus he gets his first goal of the game. Then to close out period number two, we see that Marino and Graves are trying to just uh, rocket the puck on in. And Dawson Mercer's on the doorstep of Jari once again. So he's preparing to corral the rebound and try to score it. And lo and behold, that's exactly what he did. So he gets his second goal of the game. But I think the third goal really solidified how smart a player that uh, Dawson Mercer is. Because uh, once again, Jari was more focused on Heischer and McLeod, so he leaves his post just a little bit, which left the net wide open. And Candanico, when looking at the replay and breaking it down, he was like, notice how Dawson Mercer is on the doorstep once again of Jari, and he's demanding for the puck. Because essentially, like I said, the net is wide open, and that's an easy goal for uh, Dawson Mercer to score on. So who passes him the puck? It is Nico Heischer once again, because... Uh, like I just said, Jari's more focused on McLeod and Heischer, and he doesn't pay Mercer any mind, and Mercer sees that. So Heischer is able to pass the puck to Mercer, and Mercer was able to get his hat trick, and hallelujah, it's raining hats at the Rock. Hallelujah, it's raining hats at the Rock. So Dawson Mercer was able to get his first career hat trick, and like I said, I think that shows just how smart Dawson Mercer is as a player. But the one thing I want to talk about for Dawson Mercer is that he was able to get his 25th, 26th, and 27th goal of the season. So 
For so long, I've been talking about how Dawson Mercer is sort of an X factor for the New Jersey Devils just because he's racking up all these points. And uh, he went on that major point streak just like a month or two ago. And he was just clicking with Tomas Tar and Nico Heischer. But I think we've gotten to a point where I talk about the four headed monster that the New Jersey Devils have on the offensive side of things. You got Jack Hughes, you got Nico Heischer, you got Jesper Bratt, you got Timo Meyer now added. So I think. We're getting to a point where I can't know I can't say that Dawson Mercer is an X Factor type of player. He's sort of like that MVP caliber player, at least on the Devils roster. I can't reiterate that enough. He is a he is an MVP caliber player on the Devils roster, just for clarity reasons. So I think I have to start saying the five-headed monster now because Dawson Mercer. Um, similar to what Jesper Bratt was last year, he's putting up big numbers, but I don't think enough people are just talking about uh, the overall impact that Dawson Mercer has on a roster. And uh, he, he is having a really, really solid performance for the Devils. And he's having a fantastic sophomore year for the Devils. And it's one of the things that we've been talking about going into the season, which was, was Dawson Mercer going to hit that sophomore year slump? Was he going to just slow down a little bit? Because if we know one thing about Dawson Mercer, he is a dog. That's why he has the nickname Merce Dog because he suited up in all 82 games last year, and he got off to a pretty good start. Unfortunately, he sort of fizzled out at the end, but that was the overall question. Can he remain that consistency going forward? And he's done that and more. So Dawson Mercer, I'd say, got off to a slow start to the season, but that wasn't really his fault. Lindy Ruff wasn't real, wasn't utilizing him correctly. He was using Dawson Mercer on the third or fourth line, and Dawson Mercer wasn't really being given a fair chance. But now that he's putting up these top six kind of numbers, you can now see how much higher could his points totals be, his goals, his assists, whatever the case might be. How much higher could that cat, those three categories be if Dawson Mercer was always playing on the top six going back to the beginning of the year? I think that's a, that's a reasonable question going into next year because I think we, once again, we got to start saying that Dawson Mercer, no longer an X factor kind of player. He's, sort of like a an MVP caliber player, at least on the Devils roster, because once again, he's putting up really good numbers. He's having really good showings. He had that point streak. Now he has that hat trick. And once again, he is closing in on 30 goals for the year. So Dawson Mercer, round of applause. And um, I, I toss my hat for you. I toss it onto the rink for you in your honor. Now, before we continue with uh, today's show and I give you guys the final stats and the letter grade for the New Jersey Devils, I want to tell you something about eBay. So for a championship team, it's all about making sure every player is the perfect fit. It's the same when it comes to your vehicle because every part needs a fit just right. So next time you need parts and accessories, head to eBay Motors with eBay Guaranteed Fit so you can be sure that every part you need fits right and first time around. Just add your ride to my garage and look for the green check to know where the part will fit or your money back. Because just like in sports, confidence is the name of the game when you shop on eBay Motors. And for over 122 million parts to choose from, you'll be back in the game in no time. After all that, it's easy to bring home a win when the right parts are guaranteed. So get the right parts, get the right fit, and the right prices on ebaymotors.com. Let's ride. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. And now, let me tell you a way to eat happier and healthier. So I'm going to get you hip to a product that I use literally every day. So I started taking AG1 because, like I said, I wanted to be happier. I wanted to be healthier. My body's a temple. I, start, I got to start treating it as such. So with, what is the stuff? Well, with one delicious scoop of AG1, you're absorbing 75 high-quality vitamins, minerals, whole food source, superfoods, probiotics, and abstinence to help start your day right. This special blend of ingredients supports your gut health, your nervous system, your immune system, your energy, recovery, focusing, and aging, and all those things. Its lifestyle is friendly, whether you eat keto, paleo, vegan, dairy-free, or gluten-free. Contains less than one gram of sugar, no GMOs, no nasty chemicals, or artificial anything while still tasting good. Supports better sleep quality and recovery. Supports mental clarity and alertness. It's one thing that's best about Athletic Greens that use the best of the best products based on the latest science with constant product iterations and third-party testing. So right now, it's time to reclaim your health and arm your immune system with the convenient daily nutrition. It's just one scoop and a cup of water every day. That's it. No need for a million different pills and supplements. To look out after your health, to make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune support and vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash NHL Network. Again, that's athleticgreens.com slash NHL Network to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. 
Okay, so like I do with every post-game recap, let's look at the final stats, and then I will give the Devils a letter grade for this matchup against the Pittsburgh Penguins. So shots on goal category, 37 to 23 in favor of the New Jersey Devils. Face-off percentage, 54% to 46% in favor of the Devils. Power play, Penguins were 0 for 4. Devils were 1 for 4. I believe during the course of this year's regular season matchups, I think the Pittsburgh Penguins have scored only one power play goal on the New Jersey Devils, because remember, I believe back in what it was, it was either early January or late December in which the New Jersey Devils were just killing off the Pittsburgh Penguins like it was no tomorrow. And it seems like the power play unit always struggles against the Devils. So there is something to write home about hits 19 to 11 in favor of the Penguins blocks 20 to 16 in favor of the Devils giveaways Devils led that department 13 to 6. So if I had to rate this game for the New Jersey Devils, let's think about the circumstance. They needed some sort of redemption because that was probably their previous game against the Winnipeg Jets. That was probably one of their most embarrassing matchups of the season. Like I said, I give them the benefit of the doubt just because they did get in a little late. But still, uh, if you're a playoff team, you you at least got to put up a, a better effort. But at least they didn't get shut out that game. That's the only positive takeaway I can say about that game against the Winnipeg Jets. And then uh, for this matchup against the Pittsburgh Penguins, it was they made a complete 360 and they were able to dominate from start to finish. Vitek Vancek was fantastic between the pipes once again. Unfortunately, he wasn't able to get the shutout, but Vitek Vancek is showing why he should be the go-to guy for the Devils despite having a poor performance against the Winnipeg Jets. We talked about Dougie Hamilton and his historically good year for the Devils' blue line. Devils are improving on the power play. They were able to get a five-on-three power play goal. Dawson Mercer hat trick. Man, this game was really, really, really fun to watch. It was exciting. It was exhilarating. And once again, Devils redeemed themselves. So I'm going to give them an A because there weren't really too many issues for Devils during the course of this game. So definitely an A outing for the New Jersey Devils. And they they deserve a big round of applause. And they deserve all the credit that they could get for this particular game. So very proud of the Devils in this effort. And once again, that's the difference between a middle-of-the-pack kind of team and a team that's trying to contend for something. How do you bounce back from adversity? It's something I've been preaching on the show. And Devils were able to do that in this game against the Pittsburgh Penguins. So let me know what you guys think. If you're listening on podcast streaming service, hit me up on my personal Twitter page, at TreyMath4. If you're watching on YouTube, leave a comment down below. As for today's episode, that's all the time I have for you. So continue to stay safe. Have a wonderful day, New Jersey. Go Devils. I'll catch you guys in the next episode. Thanks for listening. Once again, Dawson Mercer, round of applause. He is just been a driving force on this Devils team.